as you saw, let me just move the camera again, <clears throat> as you saw from the video title, today I want to talk to you about uh, near-death experience, you know, going beyond the wall of death to where the dead go. So it's a near-death experience in a dream. So this is going to be my sort of uh, Halloween special. Although, you know, if you have been watching me for a while or have been reading me on Facebook and um, other social media, you will realize that, uh, you know, when it comes to my work, it's Halloween every day, really. Um, so Halloween is a period of, uh, uh, of time where the attention is shifting from summer to winter. In other words, attention shifting from uh, out there into the world during summer, where we live far more extroverted lives, into winter where, the, where we are turning more inwards. And uh, um, uh, Halloween, of course, is uh, also related to Samhain, the festival, the Celtic festival, of exactly this, where the, uh, where the veil between the living and the dead thins, it's, is, is, is really non-existent. And in some countries, uh, especially in Eastern Europe, in the Catholic countries like Poland, uh, the, is, uh, the, the, the All Souls Night, that's what it's called, or the uh, saints um, night is uh, a time where a family visits the graves of their uh, ancestors. They bring uh, candles, massive amounts of candles and flowers and they all come and stand around the grave and remember the ancestor, talk about them. It is really what it's, what's, what's, what's happening here when they, when they bring the candles and the flowers. They come to the party, as it were. They come to talk to the ancestors, to become one with the ancestors at the graveside. So if you've ever seen the pictures of you've actually been there uh, during this special day, which is the 1st of November, you know, at night there is a light aura around the uh, cemeteries because there's so many uh, candles lit up so there's the light you know when the where the at the place where the dead and the living come together you know that's where the light that's where you find the light that's where you find flowers nature growing by itself you know there's your uh, place your inner temple anyway so that's a brief sort of a history about what the uh, Halloween is about in you know in our Western society Halloween's become a sort of a you know um, decorate your house with with uh, cobwebs spiders a few ghosts here and there and kids dress up sometimes that's as, that's that's as far as it goes but in reality it was a very very important uh, festival you know, the festival of thinning of the veil between the living and the dead. So today I want to share with you uh, one of my own dreams, uh, experiences really of, of, uh, of a near-death experience and the message at the end of the experience, at the end of the journey, uh, which was communicated to me, to humanity, which is just as important today as it was the day when the message was communicated to me, when I actually went beyond the wall of death to where the dead go. So this is the dream. This is the experience. It's a mystic experience. I find myself in the boat, in a small sailboat. There's a sail, the sail is raised and I'm the only one in the boat. All around me is water, ocean, vast, vast ocean, dark. I look to the left, there's just water as far as you can see. I look to the right, there's water as far as you can see. 
I look ahead of me, water as far as you can see. But the surface of the water is calm. It's like glass. It's not stormy. Behind me is the land that I'm leaving behind. And my little boat with me in it is moving ever so slowly in to this vast ocean, into this calm, calm water. And I look ahead of me and I see there is a figure walking in front of the boat. Now the figure is walking, it seems like he's walking on water, but actually there is a very narrow path, I don't know, maybe a foot, 20 centimeters, or maybe a little wider. And this path is just beneath the surface of the water and it's lit up. It's a shining light path. And the person that's walking on this path is dressed in white, white long gown, longish hair. And then I look closer, that person is pulling the boat with a rope. They might be, I don't know, 30, 40 meters in front of the boat, but they're pulling the boat and me in the boat with them. I look closer at this person and I realize that it's, he looks, the person looks like Christ, but it's also a female. One moment it's, it's, it's men, the next moment I look, it's a woman, all dressed in white with long hair, pulling me along. And I don't know how long this dream lasts, but the more, the, the more I am focused on this person, the, seam, the, the person that's pulling the boat, it seems that the time has stopped. And that, that, that is to say, it is a long, long journey, but it takes, but it, but it happens in an instant. As I'm looking and I'm watching this person, this androgynous, this the psychopomp, you know, the, this, 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 this uh, divine person, the, this, this, um, pull the, the, this what, psychopomp is a pulls the takes the souls of the dead to the afterlife. This is what it, this this is what it is. This is my you know this is the spirit, the intuition that's pulling me that way to the other shore. And the next moment I realize we are already on the other shore. And the other shore I, I see it's a sandy beach. The person that was pulling me has suddenly vanished. My boat has arrived on this beach. I disembark from the boat and I see a huge row of people just waiting on, on the shore. And I know in an instant that I know these people. I knew these people, but I don't remember them now. And they were not my immediate family or my ancestors or anything like that. I knew them from a long, long ago. Yeah. And I also know that these people are like the archetypes. That is to say, these are the building blocks of, of our society, of our culture. So in there, there will be the prince, the, the valiant knight, the wizard, the witch, the, the, the princess that is saved by the hero, the hero and so on. But at the, at, but at the head of this procession that is waiting for me, there is a queen dressed all in flowing white and a king also dressed all in flowing white. These two stand out that they're, they're the first ones to meet me. And when I walk over to them, I know them. I know their faces. I recognize their faces from somewhere, but I don't know from where. They, they, obviously they know me because when I arrive, they smile at me. They come closer to me and we embrace. And in that moment, when I'm embracing them, <laughs> when I know I have finally returned home, there is a great big voice that says, where we are all one and there shouldn't be any further divisions. In other words, I have arrived at that place, at that ground of being from which life comes and to which it returns, where we are all one, regardless of our nationalities, our traditions, our geographical locations, skin color, languages, religions, 
this is where all of humanity is just single humanity or single or, or infinite number of incarnation of the single spirit. We are all branches of the same tree of soul of God. Where we are all one and there shouldn't be any further divisions. My book, where we dream the single dream, its title is taken from this experience of this oneness in multipolarity. Yeah. So this was the huge message which is so important right now in the world when we are all fighting, you know, different tribes are trying to fight different tribes because one tribe believes itself to be um, superior to other tribe. One God, one people, people believe that their God is superior to other people's God. People that have given different names to the same God, for instance, in the Middle East. Different names to the same God and they can't get on together. This is so important right now that there is only oneness in multipolarity. This is no longer me and you. This is me as you. This is the message. This is my message uh, for decades now since I've experienced this. Yeah. In the old days, we have kind of forgotten about this, but in the old days, in Neolithic, during the time of the um, great uh, uh, stone structures, you know, in the uh, domains, in the, in the, um, these are tombs, the domains, and the people were buried, buried in there. And the way that the, the, the burial took place is that the body was left inside the domain, inside the grave, until the uh, body fell apart. Only bones were left. And then the bones were picked, to get, they were collected and put into a place, into a heap with all the other bones of all the other people from the same tribe and ancestors. You see, the individuality didn't matter, doesn't matter after death. After the death of your own uh, separateness, there comes the oneness. So the bones were collected and they were thrown into a heap with all the other bones. You were not different. There was no distinction between, um, uh, between uh, classes, between uh, uh, you know, uh, languages. There was no male and female. There were only the bones of all of us. No distinctions. The distinctions came later with the warrior culture, with the, with the patriarchal traditions. The distinctions came where a, one, a, a person that was always, we, 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 to this day, we still honor the individual. Back then in the older culture, the older culture which Maria Gimbutas, the famous archaeologist, called the, the culture of the goddess, the great goddess, there was the oneness. They st we still remember that we are all just unique branches of the single tree of God. Let me just quickly check my time here. Okay, I think I'm still okay. Yep. So, in the domain, when you, in, you know, during the Neolithic, and, the, and, the, and we have also this, uh, we have the uh, uh, archaeological evidence that this stretches further back. And this culture of the Neolithic, of the, of the um, uh, great uh, structures, the, the, uh, the stone structures such as Stonehenge, uh, and the, um, the domains, that was not just particular to one ge geographical location, for instance, the Britain or, the, or England, but it's actually found all over the world, all over the globe. So we remembered, we knew this back then, and then came the culture of the individual, the worshipping of the individual, which we still have to this day. So when in this newer culture, in this uh, masculine culture, or the male-dominated culture, if you like, the individual is the most important. So you have the hierarchies, you have the kings and the lords and the warlords and, and so on. And when they were buried, uh, when they died, they were buried usually with, with, the whole, with, with the horde, with everything that they owned. With the horses, with the slaves, with their wives, with the, with, the, with the possessions, with gold and so on. That's, you know, because in this culture, we, uh, we, we worship the, uh, the, we believe that we, we, we're going to keep going as we did during our lifetime. So we need all these things to keep going in afterlife. 
that we are going to be, a, you know, a king, a warrior. We're going to be dominating. We're going to be owning. We, that there is a structure. There's, you know, there's the rich and the poor and so on. This is what we still inherit in our Western culture. The older culture, the old, the, the culture which was um, based on the feminine knew that after death, after the death of your own in belief in your own individuality, came the multipolarity, came the belief that uh, you are, we are all one. Underneath all those things, we are all one. Like, like plants, which appear different on the surface, but are all rooted in the same ground. That's us. So that's the, um, that's the message. Uh, from this uh, near-death experience that I received to communicate to humanity uh, this is where we are all one and there shouldn't be any further divisions very difficult if you haven't experienced this just to hear about it or read about it is very difficult you really need to experience this let me just have a look at the time yeah okay and I also knew at that time when I arrived on the shore and I saw all these um, figures of these people, of these spirits that were waiting for me, this is where I'm coming home. In other words, I knew that if I stayed there, I'll be dead. I'll be dead to this world. I could stay there if I wanted to. But the message was important to come back and to bring back and to share with humanity. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, a little special for the Halloween, where the wall between the living and the dead, dead is thinning. The wall between the living and the dead is always thin. It just depends on your attention. If your attention is out there, into the, you know, into uh, your family, your job, your uh, your news cycles and politicians and the current trouble all over the world. You're not going to see or hear what's going on in the world of the spirits. But it's always there, always next to you, always. Wintertime is a time of turning inwards. Summertime is a time of turning outwards, you know, being more outgoing, extroverted. The winter is the introverted. So this is Samhain. This is the festival of... of, of, of Halloween's, yeah, when the spirits start to talk and when we start to have dreams and visions and we might actually have messages for humanity too. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about and all the best in your Halloween and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.